Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Varun Daga, and I work as an analytics consultant here at Dunn Solutions Group. Uh, today, we will be looking into implementing recommendation engines in Azure ML uh, to support the customer journey. And I hope you get something out of this webinar. Let's look at today's agenda. We'll start with an overview on Dunn Solutions Group. We'll move forward with customer journey and personalization. Finally, we'll talk about Azure Machine Learning and how it will help us build recommendation engines with a little demo. Dunn Solutions is a digital transformation consultancy. We specialize in delivering velocity to our clients. Uh, velocity comprises of two components, speed and direction. So we bring speed by business process automation and direction through analytics. Uh, like they say, after all, if you're planning to go fast, go fast in the right direction. Dunn Solutions have a long history of delivering business innovation and technology solutions to our clients. We're headquartered just outside of Chicago in Skokie, Illinois, and we also have offices in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Bengaluru, India. So we discussed about providing velocity to our clients. Uh, we do that by something we call as the velocity virtue cycle. It is a feedback loop that is and advanced analytic solutions to provide direction and automating the analytical solutions to provide speed. Uh, so the idea is to support an organization's digital transformation journey. And, and, and this is what a customer journey looks like. We define it in two stages. Pre-engagement stage, which involves customer awareness and consideration, uh, and the engagement stage where we focus on acquiring and retaining the customer to a point where they become loyal and eventually refer the organization to other people, where we call it like the advocacy phase. So retention to customer personalization. Uh, here we focus on customer retention and how personalization plays an important role in that. Customer retention uh, specifically is very important for maximizing future profit. Identifying what attracts customers will lead to greater value. And that's why customer personalization is so important. Now, there are three major analyses within customer personalization that someone could look at. Uh, let's discuss each one of them with an example of a fast food chain. So retaining the risky customer, increase competition in fast food chain, uh, or the business can lead to customer leaving them. Uh, upselling to the customer where increasing the value of customer by recommending high value items. Uh, we can also look at cross-selling the customer where we can recommend fries with burger, which is which ca which we can call as the classic example. So our focus here will be on cross-selling strategy by implementing recommendation systems to drive incremental revenue. Look at let's look at what recommendation systems are. So we will define recommendation system as a black box that recommends products to users. Now behind the scenes, uh, this black box is a statistical model that is analyzing user historical interaction data. Uh, there are two major kinds of recommendation engines. First one in content base, which analyzes product attributes, and the second one is collaborative filtering, which is based on uh, recommending items or products based on similar users. So let's uh, look at each one of them uh, separately and see how they can provide value to us. Content based recommendation systems. There could be multiple approaches to this. We can look only at the product attributes and decide what to recommend, or we can combine product attributes with user interactions for recommendation. For example, recommending a new line of chicken burgers uh, to the customer who buys a regular chicken burger could be a very basic example in this scenario. Collaborative filtering is widely used uh, in the industry. Uh, what it does is it's based on user historical interaction and categorizing similar users to recommend products. The data can be collected in two ways. Uh, there could be an explicit feedback, for example, uh, user explicitly rating the product, and, and there can be implicit feedback where we collect uh, data implicitly like item views or click-through rate from the users. Now, these two strategies, like I already mentioned, are widely implemented in the industry, and Microsoft Azure Machine Learning will help us to do that, and let's look at how. Now, Azure uh, Machine Learning is a cloud service that provides machine learning solutions at scale. There are different tools that one can leverage uh, within Azure Machine Learning, which is Azure Machine Learning Designer, 
it's it basically provides you with a drag and drop interface that uh, that provides pre-built data wrangling and machine learning functionalities. Other than that, we also have Jupyter Notebooks. Now, some of you might have heard of Jupyter Notebooks, but uh, it is basically used to run Python and R code. Microsoft Azure already provides us with uh, example notebooks so that we could leverage that code for our recommendation system. You can also write custom code in R and Python, uh, leveraging the designer itself. So it's, we can do a lot of uh, things in machine learning designer. It's very flexible and it's highly used uh, in the industry right now. Let's go ahead. Now, Azure machine learning can uh, help us solve a few challenges. Uh, firstly, we have pre-built machine learning packages in Azure uh, ML, which will help our data scientists uh, to be more flexible with what, what the application needs to be. It provides us the ability to scale. It's in the cloud, and it can run our algorithms really fast. And last but not the least, the deployment part. It provides us with very easily deployable packages in the cloud in form of web services that one can use in, uh, in their e-commerce website or any application. So this is what a typical Azure ML process looks like. We get the data and train the machine learning model. We package our model using Azure registry so that if we want to use that model later in our process, we could just do it from right there. The next step is very important. We have to validate our model using different data sets so that we're sure that this model is going to work uh, for the problem that we're trying to solve. Finally, we deploy the model as a web service to use in our application like we discussed already. Uh, and the last step is to model, uh, is to monitor how the model is performed because machine learning models de generally degrade over time. So it might be necessary for you to retrain the model and uh, continue uh, and look at the entire process again. Now let's, we're here at the fun part. We have a little demonstration for you uh, in Azure ML. Uh, we will build a recommendation engine for a food delivery company so they could recommend the right restaurant to, re to their users. Uh, the data that we're going to use here is user ratings data, user attributes, and product attributes. And we will use, use an inbuilt Azure ML predictive model. It's called the Matchbox Recommender. It's based on Bayesian statistics. But it's like a hybrid model which will use both content-based and collaborative filtering. And finally, we'll actually deploy it uh, as a web service through a click of a button. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is what the Azure ML uh, Studio interface looks like. Now it might look a little complex, but believe me, I'm gonna walk through each and every step so that it's uh, crystal clear for everyone. So, we have, we have three data sets like we already discussed. discussed. We're going to look at each one of the data sets and see what uh, it entails. So let's look at the restaurant ratings. It basically has three columns, the user ID, which is the unique identifier for the user. The place ID is the restaurant ID, and the rating is what rating that user gave them. Now, like I discussed, we're going to deploy a web service in the end. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to randomly choose a user for which we're going to later uh, look at what the recommendations are going to be. So let's copy it one more time. So now restaurant customer data is again just customer uh, attributes that we can look at. We have user ID, uh, drink level, drink pre preferences. And then we also have the restaurant feature data. Let's look at that as well. We have the name, the city, what the ambience looks like, whether they have a smoking area or not, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the three data sets. Like I said, uh, it's a hybrid model, so it takes both the user preferences. We're, we're going to see uh, what similar users have rated the restaurants as, and they're also going to take their attributes. Now I'm doing some data wrangling. Uh, I'm converting some data types, the rating data type to integer, removing some duplicate values right here. Now, a very important step in a machine learning uh, implementation is splitting our data into training and testing. So what is this training and testing uh, data set used for? The training data set is used for actually training the model by applying our statistical model. 
And the testing data set, we're just going to apply <clears throat> that model onto our test data set to evaluate our model. So like you see, there are two uh, loops that are coming out from right here. The first one will be uh, our train set, and the next one is going to be our test set. So uh, we put the train set into our train match box recommender. Now, this is a package that Azure provides us with. And the way, if you do want to see that, the way we just uh, drag, we can just drag it on here is by typing the name of the model. And right here, we can, uh, by typing the name, and let me see where, uh, so right here in the train machine learning training models, we can just drag this one right here. We're not going to do it right now because we already have it. So once we train our model, uh, and while I'm explaining stuff, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run this so that we don't have to wait later. So I'm going to run the entire workflow. So like we discussed, from the split data, we put uh, we put the training data onto the train match box recommender. Once our model has been trained, we want to evaluate our recommender. So Firstly, we're gonna out. <clears throat> we're gonna take the input from this training model and put it at the score match box recommender, which is basically uh, how we are gonna score our data set. And we'll take the split data set right here, the test data set that we created, and put it on the score match rec uh, match box recommender as well. Now, in the score match recommender, you can see that it's also taking the restaurant customer data and the product feature data. From this output, we have another package which is called evaluate recommender. We're going to put it, uh, put our output from score match box recommender, which has all the predictions for the recommendation engine for the test data set. And we're going to put the actual test data set in, uh, in the evaluate recommender as well. Let's look at the results that this give us, gives us. Now this NDCG uh, might seem like a complex uh, terminology, but it's basically it's telling us the accuracy of our model and it shows us that it's 91.3% which is uh, really good. Now again, this is dummy data. So <clears throat> that's why we're getting good results, but getting something close to that is very <clears throat> likely uh, as I've worked with other uh, projects here. Now let's move on to the fun part. We already run our model. This apply SQL transformation, what it does is it's just converting the restaurant IDs to actual restaurant names. So let's go ahead and look at that data set. So it basically gives us the uh, what user uh, should be recommended with what restaurant, and it's giving us the top three restaurants. Now the way we use these results and way we productionalize this is basically we set up a web service. Now we it says update predictive experiment because we've already created our predictive experiment. So we'll just we're just gonna go ahead and update it. It might take a few seconds for it to update, but here we go. Here here is our predictive experiment. Now there's some stuff that's added here, and I I'm gonna explain each and everything that's added. So the most important thing is the web service input and web service output. Web service input is basically the input to our application, which is going to be user ID in this case. So we're going to put the user ID that we want the recommendations for. Web service output, like you see, is coming from the apply SQL transformation that we saw in the last step. What it's doing is basically returning the, the products that we'll be recommending for those users. Now, one more thing that uh, has been added here is the select columns in the data set. Now, we're only going to recommend based on our user IDs. So we're only taking the user ID from our uh, original data set. And this uh, is again the trained model that we already trained in the training exper uh, experiment, which we're just putting on the score match box recommender. So uh, again, what I'm going to do is just run this whole thing. It's again going to take a few seconds, but like you can all see, this is really fun. And by clicks of buttons, we are actually scoring a, a training and training a predictive model and scoring a lot of our customers and we'll see how we'll, we can just use these results uh, in production as well so this has been completed what we'll do is by like i said by a click of a button we're going to deploy a web service so let's go ahead and do that now it's just saying uh, this is overriding the service that we already have uh, that's fine So it's going to go ahead and deploy our web service to it. And we have this page. It's a very, 
nice looking page. It gives you the API help page uh, on how to do request and res request response uh, calls and batch execution calls. Now I promised you I'm going to give you one recommendation and we, we copied uh, user ID. I hope it got copied. So let's go ahead and uh, paste it here. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to give it a user ID and let's see what our web service returns to us. And here we go. So it says for this user, you're going to recommend these three restaurants. So it's just so uh, sometimes it's fascinating to me by in like this short period of time, we're able to create a recommendation system and we can directly <clears throat> embed this with our e-commerce websites or applications uh, to give out recommendations. So that was our demo for you. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. So that was a demo for you. We deploy the web service on Azure Cloud. So circling back to our diagram right here, we spoke about supporting the customer journey through customer personalization and retention and how different recommendation engines can be a significant addition to a business process. And finally, our little implementation in Azure ML. Now, uh, going forward, you can contact Dunn Solutions to discuss opportunities and engage with us to deploy your machine learning solutions. I hope this webinar was of great knowledge. Uh, going forward, if you have any further questions, feel free to send me an email on vdagai.dunnsolutions.com and I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, you have. Thank you.